that I'd get you to David Baker's shop one of these days, and I just walked in for the first time. <laughs> Glad to have you. Man, I appreciate you, David, I really do. We're gonna talk about some stuff here. First thing I'd like to do is just kinda find out about David. You know, there's, there's a lot of people know David and know of him, but do a little bit of bio. What got you interested in boat racing? I was always into boats. I was, um, I had a boat from early 80s on, you know? And yeah. I started in junior high. Did you? Yeah. And once I saw that there was something besides walk-through windshields with 85s on them, <laughs> I decided that I needed to, I needed to explore that and came across, well, actually I was driving by um, Bowden Marine's old shop. We, oh, Marine really? Old shop. It's yeah. Marchetti Hydro Center. Oh, come on. And I stopped, I said, what the hell is That's that? That's cool, that's pointed. Yeah, pointed yeah. I said, what the hell is that? And so they told me and, and I said, well, I have to, I got to look into this. You know, so. <laughs> and how old were you using? I was, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, this was 1985, probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. what was your first boat? My first boat was, uh, I had gotten, I had made connections with um, John and Albert Snell. Oh, really? And so they said they had a 11 foot Zoat Hydro. It was an older style, it was a sea boat, it had a tunnel in it, but it was okay. a sea boat. And I needed something, and they were they were willing to sell it to me. So I bought my first boat from them, and I was going to buy a 102 Yamato. Okay. And I already had the money. Already talked to McKean. I'm ready to go, man. <laughs> All right. And, and they then, were what, like 800 bucks? Or something? Yeah, 895. Yeah, yeah. And then I saw the 25 XS, the short 25 XS, and I went, uh -uh. <laughs> We got to go a different direction, boys. <laughs> So, so the Bezo was how long? Ten Bezo months? was 11. It oh, was too 11. big. It was too big. big. It was a sea boat. Oh, a sea boat. A full okay. sea boat. You know, and, yeah. but I mean, um, and the, that was the old 25 before the, right. um, it was the long exchange jet. kit. Yeah. Uh, that was a short ship. Oh, short it was one of the first okay. ones. I bought it from Bill Hall and Marine and I ordered it and I went down to get it and there was this box about eight feet long. <laughs> and I said, ma'am, you have made a mistake. That is not That's my 25 motor. It's supposed to be about this long. <laughs> And she opened the box, and there it was, about that long. You know? But cool. uh, that's yeah. the coolest looking motor I think Mercury's ever put. Oh, out. I couldn't. I mean, I had gone to a few Champ boat races, seen the Sea Bolds and people like that racing. Yeah. yeah. And it was just a miniature Champ boat motor. You that's know? And right. I said, well, <laughs> I got to have one of these if if I'm gonna, because I didn't even know if I'd race them. Man, I just wanted one to play with. And I said, well, if I'm gonna have to sit here and look at some, I'll look at something that's cool. You know. So, yeah. So I was I was pretty addicted to it at an early age. You know, yeah, so. I did too. I mean, my daddy raced, drove for John Snell. In oh the wow, I didn't know that. That's before they had real race boats. I yeah. mean, they'd run, you know, uh, a, a, a Marfew. Daddy had a Marfew that was a 14 foot boat and had a four cylinder Mercury on it. He ran it in a D class, I think, is what it was. And uh, then they bought a D utility. They mm, bought yeah, a, a Speedliner. Yeah. Oh yeah, Speedliner. Yeah, sure. had a Speedliner. Of course, it had the open cockpit in the front. And uh, Daddy got in that thing, and boy, it went up, run real good. And the first turn, it threw him out of the boat. <laughs> of course, Daddy was used yeah, to rolling. Out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> true. But Daddy was used to rolling it up, you know, because it, uh, it, they had a yellow jacket, and yellow jacket was a fast yeah, boat, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Did, you know, Roy Rogers. Roy Rogers had a yellow jacket. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Roy Rogers had a yellow jacket, and Skeeter had one, and and. and it's a round bottom. I mean, it's this formed plywood, and you've got to roll that something up to make it turn. Well, that's what Daddy was trying to do. He was get on the inside of that speed liner, and it caught an edge and threw him out. And then he realized, get on the outside of it and run that edge around, I, and it turned like crazy. I guess a few years later, you could have showed him how to do that roll up thing, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> roll up specialist in the yellow jacket. Yeah. In fact, Skeeter was running Daddy's brother one time on the back stretch. We even had a film of it. He hit a wave and rolled over to the outside, and the boat rolled all the way over 
And he kept going. <laughs> Of course, back in and running 40 mile an hour. I ain't never been that lucky. <laughs> Me I've done the first one, ring and the second one. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, what it is, it's a sour cream bottle. <laughs> I, everything, hey, everything I turn, yeah, it's a cream bottle. That's what it is. Cool, cool. Well, take me on the tour around your new depot. All there. right, let's start the back. All right. Okay. I was I was torn between building a flat bottom and a tunnel. Okay. okay. I said flat bottom, I think would be good. Some people run flat bottom, some people run tunnels on the I said, well, I think I'm gonna go ahead and stick with what I know how to build, which, right. is, which is the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So I widened the bottom 36 to 38. Okay. Offset it, I think it's like 10 and three quarters, 11 and a half. It's just not okay. much at all, very little offset. All right, so the right side is, is, is wider. wider. Yeah. Wider, okay. And what I did since I was building it for Matt, he's a little bookie. You know, <laughs> Normally I build a 17 inch cockpit, 17 wide. Well, he don't need that. He, that's a 15 and a oh, half. Okay. 15 and a half on the just on the boat, he's fine with that. So I said, okay, I'm gonna build 16. So I built a 16 inch cockpit with uh, the tunnel Normally the tunnel will have will be 46 inches long, which is about right here. Okay. On this one, I, I went on with 33. I figured I'd get a little more surface area, mm -hmm. a little more bottom there. Yeah, uh, so, you know, we were talking a while ago about trapping the air. Mm -hmm. A boat, a hydro, where you're trapping air, it's got to come out the back. Right. Or it goes out the sides and it blows it over. Right. Well, you know, and, and people will do it. We'll cut the air traps back here. Uh huh. Right. Just to dump air before it gets to the back. Yep. Yep. You know, and I've I've never had to do that because I've always been able to either adjust my settings or may, or the high engine heights or whatever to make it work. But right. I think that's an idea that people use sometimes. I think it's a fix though. I don't I don't I don't think it's a design. I think it's something you have to do if it boat's not right. working right. If you run if you cut these off, to me, these make the back end of the boat lift a little bit. Sure they do. Because they hold that, hold that back end up. Yeah. If you cut these off, then that back end's gonna sit down more. It's gonna drag down. more tail. Now, right. you may need to drag more tail, I don't know. I like this. This is this is a safety mechanism. Oh yeah, this dumps enough air to Dumps keep enough you. air to keep you where and, they come And back the good thing with that center pod, I can, I, can, I can actually do side pods if I wanted to, but I mean, I can regulate, say it's dumping too much air. Mm -hmm. I can come back in and add a four inch on each side. Okay, right, right. And and, and I, it takes a lot of power planning, but I can, I can plan it up to do it. I'll yeah, yeah. And I can, I can narrow this tunnel down to wherever I want it, mm -hmm. you know. And I've never had to before, but, you know, it, it could be that it comes down to I had to do that. Yeah. You know? But I think the 38 bottom was, was a, that was just like un, unheard of for me because I've never built anything bigger than 36. Right, right. But, you know, I come back after 18 years and What's that two cylinder bolt? That's thirty eight. That's thirty nine. That's forty on the one. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And well, the thing is a short course looks so late like hell. But you know, you know? In, in the old days, it, it was true, you know, the narrative the silvers when I was running with him. Yeah, right? Yeah. He had the top end, I had to punch yes. with him a twenty eight exactly. inch bottom. But it comes down like you were said you did the math, right? Yeah. It comes down to square inches. Yeah. So yeah, square inches of what bo bottom on the water. Yeah, yeah. So, will be 46 inches long, which is about right here. Okay. On this one, I, I went 33 with it. Figuring I'd get a little more surface area, mm -hmm. a little more bottom there. So, normally the rock type bow, which is what I copied, yeah, yeah. would have a center pod in it like this. Huh, what's that for you, now, you I, think? I'm assuming to give it more bottom flotation or to give it more acceleration, I don't know. Yeah. But so. Maybe I grip, did, I don't know. I, I mean, it's was, another edge, I don't know. What I did was I took, I went to I used a little bit of math, and I went and measured the square inches of surface bottom. Oh right. On this boat, mm -hmm. like this, and the rock with the center pod, and they're almost identical. Okay, okay. And I went, okay, even though some of it's a little more at the back, this is wider, two inches wider. Right. So I said, let's try that. So mm -hmm. basically, it is a, it's it could be a. The greatest thing in the world, or it could be a nice bonfire. You know, we don't know. <laughs> no, you know, with that kind of thought in it, it's going. You know, it's going to be fine. You know, you got enough boats.
all on the fin, you know, yeah. the boat's yeah. doing it. Yeah. The boat's yeah. turning it. I think between the sponson edge and the angle of the Yeah, the giant, angle. Yeah, yeah. I think it's got to, I mean, obviously, they, I mean, they, they've been running the same boat for I would think years. this situation would be smoother into the turn rather well, than grabby. Yeah. That's what, if the, we built one one time, the first two cylinders we ever built, we didn't know. So we followed the bottom. With, our, with this nail. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we had about this much air cap in the front. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, so I'm used to seeing that. throw you out just looking at it clearly. <laughs> but it would turn on a dime yeah. if you can make it, if you stay in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we learned quick that that, no, that ain't right. You know? <laughs> well, you've always used a lot of lift in the front yeah, yeah. of your two-cylinder stuff. And I really like that. I like the fact that your lift comes up quick and then it, from what the boats I've seen, right. the two-cylinder boat. It, it comes up quick, but then it levels off and, and runs pretty far yeah. back. To me, that gives you, a, 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 I'm asking, because to me, that helps it pop out of the corner. Yes, the air, the, I think yeah. the air does help up it. Quick. I try to, on this particular boat, it's about an 80 inch afterplane. 80 inch, wow. And then what I do on the bottom is I try to keep the bottom basically straight, basically straight for about 70 inches. Okay. If you look down at it should be straight to somewhere around here or somewhere. Right, right. And, cool. And then it, then it starts to break forward. And I have numbers that I want here, numbers that I want here, and numbers that I want up here. Okay, okay. And if I get, and I try to I adjust my air trap, which is this piece, this whole piece. I adjust this air trap when I put it on to get those numbers close to where I want it. Yeah, 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 cool. And, and, and those numbers are just numbers that I've, of votes I've, seen before right right that, that and, work. and built and worked yeah, yeah. and then the, on the center pot on this one or i'm not putting the center pot on this one but if i do i can always come back and add it later oh, if sure. I, I need it yeah i was going to put one in it and then i said it doesn't make sense to try to take it off if i if i don't like it yeah yeah it's yeah it's much easier to take to <laughs> add it on man you could you could even and i've done this attach stuff you know at the race course and try it oh yes and, yes. and then take it back off <laughs> I've screwed some stuff to this boat here. Before, yeah, I've got you know, so. a box full of fins. Oh, <laughs> you know, for runabout. And, and on a hydro, turning fins are, man, turning fins will make a good boat handle terrible if they're if they're long. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been looking. Um, all the APBA guys run kind of the same fin. It's tilted back and square at the bottom, and it looks like everybody runs them. They huge, huge deep fins. Yeah. I don't know if it's because it. They run short courses a lot, or, or full maybe, field. Maybe I don't the know. boats, maybe the boats are a little flightier. I don't know, but I mean, I've been running the same exact fin on my two-cylinder boats. Yeah. And I'll probably start with the same fin on this one. Yeah. 